Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin in the name of the God whose mercy is profound, whose kindness is forever. Uh, we are now proceeding towards understanding how nouns are used in Arabic sentences. Just to give you uh, the perspective of uh, where we are, uh, in any language uh, that is spoken or written, uh, you normally have uh, three kinds of words. You have nouns, which are ism. You have verbs, which are frail. And you have particles, which are Roof. Right now, we are discussing nouns. How nouns uh, are utilized in sentences, what forms do they take, how to get an understanding of uh, what their role is, quite apart from what the meanings are. Of course, meanings have got to do with your understanding of the vocabulary, which uh, improves gradually as you move on to understanding the language and using it and reading it more and more. But we are right now talking about the use of uh, nouns. Thereafter, we'll move towards verbs. And while we discuss the two, uh, the particles will always uh, find a role here and there for them to be understood, not quite as a distinct uh, category of words, but uh, as helping, aiding words. Uh, when we discuss nouns, uh, we've started the understanding of Arab. And uh, we have understood the fact that Arab takes three forms. Uh, there are three categories, three cases. Uh, we've already discussed the case of uh, uh, Rafa. And uh, what is left is Nasab and jar. These are the cases which uh, we have in Arabic and uh, we are talking about uh, the different possibilities where Rafa, Nasab and Jar are used. Uh, the nominative case, the genitive case and uh, uh, the uh, accusative case. Accusative is Nasab and genitive is Jar. Uh, but before I move on to the next possibility, Nasab or Jar, uh, as we've already done, Rafa, uh, let us recap uh, the uh, different <coughs> forms these three possibilities take. Rafun, if you recall, when it's uh, singular masculine, it's Alimun. Uh, when it's uh, Double masculine, it's alimani. When it's uh, plural masculine, it's alimuna. When it's uh, singular feminine, it's alimatun. When it's uh, double feminine, it's Ali Matani. And when it's uh, plural feminine, it's Ali Maton. You come to Nasab and it is Ali uh, Man. I've already explained that there is an additional Alif that is added. In the case of double, it's Ali Maini. In case of plural, it's alimina. In case of uh, singular feminine, it's alimatan. In case of uh, double feminine, it's alimataini. And in case of uh, plural, Feminine, it's alima tin. And jar, uh, it's uh, 
appearance is not very different from uh, the appearance of nasab except in the case of uh, the singular nouns uh, aliman would become alimin and the rest are the same it's alimaini it's alimina it's alimatin from alimatan in the case of jar alimataini and a lima tin now uh, today i would talk about uh, one important possibility of why a uh, noun appears in an arabic sentence in the uh, arab of jar the genitive case now you might well ask why not nasab which is the right sequence if we move towards describing the possibilities of arab uh, well the reason is just practical while in case of nasab there are a number of possibilities more than 10 in case of jar there are only two possibilities so i think it's a not a bad idea to to cover uh, the items that need to be covered um, cover those items which can be done more swiftly and then move on to the ones which are a little more uh, a little more in detail so let me take up the case of uh, jar the uh, nouns are used in the form of jar uh, the arabic form of jar uh why does it happen what are the reasons uh as i said the reasons in the case of jar are very few in actual fact there are only two reasons that uh, noun appears in the arab of jar which is the genitive form and one of them is what is called harf jar which is the particle the particle that is whenever whenever a noun is preceded by a particle uh the noun that follows it takes Uh, the form of jar so the genitive case is because of two reasons one of them is harf jar and the other is mudaf which if we write in the um transliteration form it would appear like this because d with a dot beneath it is actually uh wad uh mudaf ilay pardon me mudaf ilay is <clears throat> what uh takes this genitive form uh we'll talk more about mudaf ilay uh hopefully in the next presentation uh it's uh, called the governed noun mudaf itself is the governing noun and mudaf ilay is the governed noun however right now let's focus our attention on the first of the two possibilities which is harf jar harf jar is the particle uh at times uh, the particle appears just to convey a particular meaning which the particle carries on other occasions it is actually it appears as a preposition of a verb we know quite well in english as well that there are verbs which are accompanied by prepositions and there are other verbs which uh, do not need uh, the uh, the uh, appearance of a preposition uh so what are the particles in uh, in arabic you know it's interesting that uh, when traditionally arabic is uh, learned uh because uh, 
you know, there was a, an emphasis on memorizing the text. Uh, and you know that uh, to memorize, it's far more workable if you have uh, the text in the form of poetry. Uh, prose is difficult to memorize. So what was done was that these particles, uh, huruf e jar, huruf is the plural of harf, uh, there are 17 in all. Uh, maybe there are more, but 17 are normally better known. Uh, they were given uh, the uh, form of uh, a poetic couplet and uh, in, in, in Persian. And the way it's pronounced, well, a per person with as poor a memory as, as, as I, uh, I'm also able to, um, uh, to, to recall it. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's like this. Bao, tau, kafo, lamo, vau, munzo, muzhala. Rubba hasha min ada fi an ala hatta ila. The beauty of uh, poetry is that I'm absolutely dead sure, despite my poor memory, that I've actually counted them 17 correctly. But amongst these 17 huru fajar, uh, there are lesser than 17 that are directly relevant for us, which are more frequently used in the Quran. And let's take them one by one. Uh, let me remove it. Um, and let's take the first one, bow, which is b, bay, which means with. You know, for example, we have in the Quran, allazi, the one who allama, taught, bil, qalam. He taught with the pen. Now, because of ba, al qalam, the noun that is preceding it, uh, has taken uh, the Arabi form of jar. It's now in its uh, genitive case. That is ba, which really means uh, with. The next is ta. which is by, you know, it's a word swearing. While in the Quran you have, probably in Surah Swad, Tallahi, uh, by God. So that is Ta. Again, Allah has taken a genetic case, a jar form, because of Ta. Likewise, we have Lam really means for. Uh, it's for him. Uh, you might say belongs. Lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. For Allah is uh, whatever is in the heavens or the earth, or to Allah belongs. So Lam before Allah. Has, uh, co has caused Allah, the, ver the, the noun, to be in genitive form, in uh, the Arabic form of jar. The interesting thing about this is that uh, whereas uh, without lam, the word Allah looks longer, bigger because of an additional alif, but when lam is added to, be to begin with, it gets shortened. Well, that's, that's uh, the way the language has caused it to happen. And uh, we cannot normally have very many explanations to some of the things that uh, take place. We move on. After Lam, uh, we have uh, Kaf. Kaf means uh, like. Alam tara kaifa dharab Allahu. Mathalan kalimatan tayyibatan ka shajaratin. Do you not see how God gives the example of a good word, good expression? It is like 
کا شجر دن لائک اے ٹری وچ از پیور وچ از پیور طیبتن سو شجر اور شجرہ ہیز ٹیکن جینیٹو فارم ہیز ٹیکن جر بیکاز آف کاف پریسیڈنگ اٹ اینڈ کا مینز لائک لائک اے ٹری وچ از پیور دین وی ہیو واؤ وچ اگین لائک تا مینز مینز بائی دیٹ از یوز فار دا پرپز آف اوتھ سویرنگ ول آسر بائی دا ٹائم بائی دا ٹائم ان عرب ان دا قرآن دی آل مائٹی ٹیکس اوتھ اور سویرز اپون ٹائم اور مینی ادر تھنگس بیکاز دیز آبجیکٹس آر مینشن ایز ایویڈنس فار دا کلیم دیٹ از میڈ لیٹر بٹ دیٹس آف کورس از کمپلیٹلی سیپریٹ ایشو اٹ ہیز ٹو ڈو ود دا کویشچن آف تفسیر بٹ رائٹ ناؤ دی امپارٹنٹ تھنگ از دیٹ ول آسر واو ہیز کازڈ ال آسر ٹو ہیو جر دی جینیٹو کیس بائی دا وے واو از آلسو یوزڈ ان عربک ان دا قرآن مور آفن فار اینڈ اینڈ وین اٹ از یوز فار اینڈ دین آبویسلی اٹ مے ناٹ نیسرلی بی فالوڈ بائی جر بیکاز اینڈ از جسٹ جوائننگ اٹس کنجنکشن اینڈ اٹس ناٹ اٹس ناٹ دس پٹیکولر لیٹر اٹس ناٹ دس پٹیکولر پارٹیکل بیکاز یو نو یو ہیو ان لینگویجز کمپلیٹلی آئیڈینٹیکل ورڈس میننگ ڈفرینٹ تھنگس اینڈ آبویسلی یو ہیو ٹو یو لوک ایٹ دا کانٹیکسٹ ٹو ڈیسائن ایز ٹو ویدر دے آر یوز فار ون purpose meaning or another we move on from uh, vow to min <coughs> min wa ma lahum min dunillahi mim waliyin uh min is <coughs> from So, min has caused waliyin to have jar. Take another example, famous example, the very last words of the Quran. Min al-jinnati wannas. The good thing about this example is that we have vow here, not in the sense of uh, oath, swearing, but in the sense of and. The Satans who yuvasvisu fi sudur in nas, who whisper <coughs> into the hearts of uh, men, uh, are min al jinnati wan nas, from amongst jinns and men. So al jinna has a jar <coughs> because of min. Another good thing that this example gives as distinct from the earlier one is that sometimes uh, for the need of uh, Continuing the flow of uh, the statement, the way it is read without interruption, uh, the uh, noon <coughs> takes uh, a fatha and uh, the uh, normal jazm disappears. So al-jinna takes jar because of min and this time it's not min, it's min al-jinna. And vannas uh, is actually and and annas has taken jar. not because of vow this vow is a different vow uh, it's because of the same uh, minal jinna uh, vow is uh, adding it up to al jinna and therefore whatever is relevant to al jinna is also relevant applicable to annas <coughs> so that is min from min we move on to the next one which is fi fi فی مینز ان 
لہو ما لہو فار ہم از وٹ ایور از فس سماوات ان دی ہیونز اینڈ دی ارتھ لیٹس پور اٹ دیئر ول ارتھ سماواتی ول ارد اگین واؤ بٹ دا واؤ کنجنکشن اینڈ سو فی ان اسماوات ان دی ہیونز اینڈ ان دی ارتھ از گیونگ جر سو دیر آر نمبر آف ریزنز why this jar would appear uh, let me try to squeeze in uh, the ones that are left one of them is now uh, i'm always poor at planning the board and uh, the space un un is from although i'm sure there are examples of un from the Quran, uh, more frequently used uh, reason for un is to be found in hadith. So, you know, whenever you mention the chain of narrators, uh, for example, you would find uh, the famous uh, narrator, companion of the Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, an Abi Huraira, uh, which really means This particular hadith is being narrated from An Abu Huraira. Uh, this is the name of uh, uh, one of the companions. And uh, Abi is actually the jar form of uh, Abu. You know, the same word when it is expressed in the form of Rafa. Uh, nominative case is Abu when it is in the form of uh, uh, Nasab. Uh, the accusative form, accusative case, it's Aba. And uh, when it is in the form of Jar, the genitive case, it's Abi. So here it's Jar. And this Jar has come, has been uh, required uh, because of An, which again is Harfe Jar. After an, we have ala. Ala. Ala means upon, on. Uh, you know, the Quran says, Wama ala rasul. Illa al balagh. So there is no responsibility on the messenger. So Allah uh, comes before our Rasul and what it has done is that it has caused our Rasul to take the genitive form, uh, the genitive case which is uh, uh, Jar Arab. And uh, then we have Hatta. Hatta if you allow me here, uh, is until, uh, until, hatta matla'il fajr. Until the rise of uh, dawn. So, matla is uh, the rise. So, matla immediately preceded by hatta has again appeared in uh, the uh, jar Arab form. This is uh, the genitive case. And uh, last but not the least uh, is ila. Ila means until. Uh, the Quran says, Thumma atim siyam, then you complete the fast 
الى الليل until the night so the noun al-layl is again in the generative form it's a uh, it's a uh, in the jar arabi form uh, you would find that these uh, particles they appear uh, in the quran very often and what they do in uh, in changing the appearance of a noun is that they always cause the noun to uh, get down to a genitive case uh, i say get down because you know uh, genitive case or uh, jar form is considered to be the lowest of the three forms uh, i mentioned earlier that uh, these particles sometimes uh, are used for the purpose of conveying their meanings uh, what we've already studied and sometimes uh, some of these particles are actually uh, used alongside uh, the uh, verbs and they are in actual fact uh, the prepositions of those verbs so uh, for example daraba zaidun khalidan that we studied daraba doesn't need any preposition but uh, we shall see later that if you say zahaba zaidun Zaid went to the masjid. Uh, Zahaba needs ilah. The same ilah which we have done over here is the one which also appears uh, with, uh, with Zahaba as a preposition. And there are many other examples. May the Almighty enable us to understand his uh, book's language properly so that we are able to read and understand it properly.